question for you. Are you interested in building a kit plane? If you answered yes, then this video is going to offer you 10 tips that will help ensure success in building and flying your project and also success in picking the airplane that is right for your mission. If you stick around all the way to the end, I have a bonus tip just for you. Now a lot of these types of videos will go from number 10 and they'll work their way down to number one. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going from one to 10. The reason why is I have them organized somewhat logically. So starting at the beginning, tip number one is to ask yourself, why do you want to build an airplane? Now you may, you may have a certain airplane in mind, like let's say a Zenith or an RV or a Rans, or it doesn't matter what home built and you just wanna go fly the airplane. You don't really have an interest in building that airplane. If that's the case, you may not be successful in completing a multi-year project. You may wanna think about just going and buying a flying example of that airplane. There's a lot of them out there for sale. There's a lot of used home builds for sale. You might find a great deal on one. But if you're the kind of person that enjoys the challenges and uh, just the, the rewards of building an airplane with your own two hands, and you wanna customize it exactly how you want it, uh, then by all means, buy a kit and build. Personally, I really like the process of building an airplane, uh, and I don't mind spending a couple years in my shop building. So again, ask yourself, do you just want the airplane to go fly, or do you really uh, enjoy the process of building? Okay, tip number two, think about your mission. That will determine which airplane you choose. Do you wanna fly at 200 miles an hour and fly across the country? Or do you wanna land on a sandbar and go fishing? Do you need four seats? Would two seats be enough? Maybe you only need one seat. What kind of airplane do you need to fit your mission? So ask yourself again, what do you plan on doing with that airplane? If you plan on just going up in the local area for those evening 20 minute flights, you probably don't need a 250 mile an hour airplane with retractable landing gear and a 250 horsepower engine. That's a lot of money to just go up and putt around. If you wanna land on a sandbar and go fishing, then something like a glass air is probably not an airplane for you. It's a nice sleek looking sexy airplane, but you're not gonna land on a sandbar with it. If you have a family of four or five, then an RV8 may not be for you because you're only gonna take one of those family members. Maybe you just wanna fly by yourself. Maybe a little single seat would be perfect for you. How do you wanna use this airplane? How do you really envision using that airplane? Now, the very first kit plane that I built is this beautiful Rans S10. It's a great little airplane, and I chose that airplane because I just thought it was cool. I had visions of going up and doing aerobatics and maybe doing air shows and things like that, but I really didn't spend a lot of time thinking about, realistically, what am I going to do with this airplane? So I built the airplane, I flew it for a year or two years, and what I found out was 90% of my flying was with my dad, or another passenger just flying around to a pancake breakfast or a local fly-in or something like that. And that little S10 wasn't suited perfectly for that mission. So again, think about, spend time, think about how you're going to use the airplane and which airplane really fits the mission that you see yourself doing. Tip number three, you have defined your mission for the airplane. Now it's time to really start uh, looking for that specific airplane. But before you do that, what materials are you most comfortable working with? For example, I really like working with aluminum, like the Zenith behind me. Um, I did build two tube and fabric airplanes and putting on the fabric covering is an art form in itself and I found that really fun. Maybe you are an experienced woodworker and you wanna build an airplane made entirely out of wood. There's kits out there. Maybe you like fiberglass and you wanna spend years sanding fiberglass for some reason, well, there's a lot of great fiberglass airplanes out there. So think about, you're going to be building this airplane for probably a couple years. You're gonna be in your workshop, hopefully every day working on this airplane. What, what materials are you most comfortable with or what materials do you really enjoy working with? Because that can determine which airplane you choose. All right, tip number four. 
Once you have narrowed down your, let's say, top three choices of airplanes, get online and join or register on a forums. I think almost all of the forums are free. You just put in an email address, a password, you create an account, and now you can ask a lot of questions. So for example, on the screen behind me is the Zenith forums. If you were interested, let's say in a Zenith Super Duty or a Cruiser or whatever Zenith model, you get on the Zenith forums and you can ask any question you want about the airplane. It's a great way to start your research without ever even leaving your own home. All right, tip number five, join the EAA. Join a local EAA chapter. They have uh, chapters all over the world. And if you don't know where your local chapter is or who to contact, visit EAA.org. And on their website, they have a list of all of the chapters and all of the contact information for those chapters. Now, obviously going to a chapter meeting is a great way to meet people who are enjoying the same hobby that you want to enjoy. And it's a great way to talk to people, ask questions. There's a ton of experience uh, in those chapters. You can probably get any question you have answered at a chapter meeting. Now, speaking of EAA, tip number six I have for you is to go to Oshkosh. It's the last weekend in July every year. It's the most amazing time you could possibly have if you're into aviation. It's more than just an air show. It's an entire convention. Uh, if you're interested in a particular airplane, you can go out there and you'll probably see 50 of them. It's a great way to talk to the builders. It's a great way to talk to the pilots. You can talk to the kit manufacturers. And not only that, but let's say you wanna build uh, a RANS airplane or a Kit Fox, something that's tube and fabric, let's just say for this example. You could, they actually have free forums or workshops where you can actually, for free, cover an aircraft part. You can learn all about the process. You're guided step by step. If you wanna learn how to weld, there's workshops on welding. If you wanna learn how to do simple fiberglass, there's workshops on that. There's workshops for virtually anything or any skill that you need to know to build an airplane. So it's a great place to go and research and just meet a, a great group of people. So tip number seven, at this point, I'm going to assume that you have your choice of airplanes narrowed down to one or maybe two choices. Now is the time, if you could possibly do it, go visit the factory. Drive out there, fly out there, take vacation, do whatever you need to do to visit the factory. There's so much you can learn. Just talking to the people at the factory, you can learn a lot. Do they just want your money and they wanna never hear from you again? Or are they truly interested in you as a person and the success of your project? And to be honest, I've been treated both ways. I've been treated really poorly by the biggest kit plane manufacturer out there. And I've been treated awesomely by the folks at Zenith. Um, and no, they're not paying me to say that, but there's a reason why I'm building two Zenith airplanes is the folks at Zenith truly consider you a family member when you're part of their team. And even if you're not, even if you have not purchased a kit from them yet, um, you know, they still answer all your questions. But visiting the factory, you can take a look at their operations. You can see how the parts are made. Uh, you can fly the airplane. Does the airplane fly nicely? Do you fit in the airplane? Maybe you're too tall for that particular airplane. Uh, there's a lot you can learn by visiting the factory, and it's usually very well worth taking a trip out there. If you can't go to the factory, the second best option is to find someone local to you that might have that particular airplane, and maybe that person will take you for a ride, and if not a ride, maybe they'll let you sit in it, or maybe just look at it. You can see the airplane in person. You can talk to them as a builder. You can ask about their experiences building the airplane. You can ask about um, how was the customer support at the factory? How are the kits? How are the parts? What's the quality like? Um, so go into the factory, you can learn all those things. Second best, go visit somebody that has the airplane. Tip number eight. Are we on eight? I think it's eight. After you're done visiting the factory, you're going to have a pretty good idea of what comes with a kit and what doesn't. You may or may not know this, but a lot of times when you buy a kit plane, things like antennas and wiring and switches, um, what else, avionics, paint, 
uh, interior parts. There's a lot of parts that don't come with the kit. You're free to choose whatever parts you want for that. And a great place to start looking for those are these big catalogs. Now this is the aircraft spruce catalog. Leading Edge Airfoils puts out a catalog. Uh, Wag Arrow has a catalog. But when you look through these catalogs, it really is, it's just kind of fun actually and interesting and educational to see what kind of parts are available, to look at prices on those parts, because that all gives you an idea of what this airplane is actually gonna cost you when it's all said and done. So just get a catalog. These are free from any of these companies. You can order a free catalog. Start flipping through it, get familiar with the prices, get familiar with the parts, and you'll be able to see just exactly what kind of things are available for your airplane. All right, tip number nine, that is to be realistic. Be realistic in what it's actually going to take to build this airplane. Be realistic in what it's going to cost to build this airplane. I wish I could tell you this was a cheap, inexpensive hobby. It's not, that's just the truth. Airplanes are expensive. Now, there are ways you can minimize your cost. You can partner with a, another builder, uh, you can buy a used engine, things like that. But in general, airplanes, aviation, it's expensive. So if you're realistic in what this, gonna, what this airplane's going to cost, you're not gonna be surprised in the middle of the project. Believe me, it happens all the time where people will buy a kit, they spend a year building it, and they run out of money because they didn't know exactly how much it was going to cost, and then they wind up selling that half-built airplane for pennies on the dollar. Don't let that happen to you. Tip number 10 is something I have no experience with because I was a genius and never got married and had kids and I can spend my money and my time on anything I want. But I was told I should include this tip. If you're going to spend a couple years in your garage building an airplane, you should probably include your family. Include your spouse, get your kids involved. Don't ignore them for the couple years it's going to take you to build an airplane. I have no idea what they're talking about. Those are the 10 tips that I hope will ensure your success in this project. Now, if you've watched this far, I really thank you for watching this. If you found these tips helpful, please subscribe to the channel. Please give it a thumbs up. And for all of you that stuck around, I'm going to give you a bonus tip, which I happen to think is the best tip of all. Now, the reason I want to give you this tip is because I talk to a lot of people and I get a lot of emails. Uh, from people that are interested in building airplanes. That was one of the reasons why I made this video. A lot of people are simply afraid to get started. They're afraid of what they don't know. My tip to you is just get started. It doesn't matter what you don't know. Nobody knows everything there is to know when they buy their first kit plane. I've built four air Three, three or four airplanes, and I still don't know everything. It's okay. Anything you don't know, you're going to learn from the EAA. You're going to learn from your chapter meetings. You're going to learn from the internet forums. You're going to learn from the workshops at Oshkosh. You don't have to know everything to get started. The biggest tip I can give you is just get started. Just do it. Just do it. I should make like a logo or something with that saying, just do it. Nobody's ever thought of that before. I'll bet I could get rich on that. Just do it. Maybe like a swoosh or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs>